Thanks so much for sharing your garden with us. And now we're going to be talking about one of my favorite topics, winter annuals, things that will really brighten up those winter months for you. We're joined by Marcus Young from Bloomers out in Elgin. And welcome back to Central Texas Gardener. Thanks, Tom. It's good to be here. It's, uh, this is a fun thing for gardeners to do is to, to brighten up the, their patios with a lot of container plants. And it's a way to really extend the seasons of our gardening, isn't it? Well, absolutely, and especially after a, a long, hot summer, it's, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> we, we're all looking forward to fall, right. cooler temperatures, and uh, to get some, uh, get some color and also some edible things in the landscape. Oh, that's right. Yeah. And, you know, one of the nice things about the winter annuals, it doesn't require that intensive everyday attention that the summertime container garden does. Yes, yeah, so it's, it's a much more uh, user-friendly time to garden. Right, right. Yes. Well, we're going to be talking about some of our old-time favorites, but also some cool new things. And, and as you mentioned, edibles. And we're going to start off by talking about edibles. There are a lot of really cool, beautiful edible plants that people can be using during the wintertime. Lots of the leaf crops. And uh, we're, I'm going to start by talking about this particular variety of mustard green. This is eye-catching. Yeah, it's, it's just super ornamental. And, and when you when you see that, it's just, it just begs to be put into a pot or yeah. uh, combined with some flowers and, and it tastes good. Yeah. yeah. Well, this is Osaka purple uh, and it's a mustard green. And I just want to put a couple of these together okay. so people can get a sense of what they, they look like in combination. But I'm now holding up next to it a red vein sorrel. Yes. And what is sorrel used for? And this is, I'm, I, I hear it all the time. I assume it's just something you can top your uh, gar your salads off. Yeah, with. this one in particular is, is more of a, uh, an, a leafy, uh, as opposed to the French sorrel, mm -hmm. which is used more in soups and mm -hmm. things like that. This one is actually a great salad green. Okay. And, uh, so it's a, an annual variety, but well, it's very winter hardy. Yeah, very attractive as yeah. well. And I'm going to put them down here, but uh, right next to this beautiful red lettuce as well. So you could just do a container with just these leaf crops. It'll be eye-catching and it's something you can harvest throughout the, the winter time. Yeah, and you can just you know pick a few leaves off and throw them in your salad, and uh, mm -hmm. they're easy to grow, so right. uh, they're a lot of fun. And a lot of fun for kids to grow these as well. They have a lot of fun with these. Well, we have a, a couple of, uh, not a couple, we have a, a bunch of really beautiful planted-up containers. The next one we're going to talk about features a lot of favorite winter annuals for color. And I'm going to start off by talking about calendula, because this is a, a tough performer. You've brought us, a, it looks like a double flower form. Right. So calendula is also called pot marigold, mm -hmm. and it has a long history of being uh, an edible flower. Mm -hmm. uh, it has kind of a peppery taste to it, but uh, it's a wonderful fall flower, um, and it doesn't like the heat so much, but great from winter through spring. Yeah. yeah. A lot of these plants will just just sail through the winter time, but then collapse, say, in late April, right? <laughs> that, yeah, they'll usually go a little longer than that. I'd say you could probably count on getting them through about mid to late May. Okay. Then, then it's All time right. to switch over. Yeah, they, yeah. Some of them, like the sweet alyssum, have a real problem with the heat, but the alyssum, I, I think the fragrance is great. I mean, it, it really it is perfect for hanging baskets because as you walk by, you can really catch that sweet fragrance. Yeah, it reminds me of honey. It has yes. a nice honey it, fragrance to it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Alyssum, and this is a pretty purple variety, and there's also some snapdragons in there. And uh, you, we're going to talk more about snapdragons later, but this is something you really wanted to get out. If you want beautiful snapdragons in the spring, plant them in the fall, right? Yes, you really need to get them started in the fall, and they're going to bloom. Uh, they're going to give you a nice fall bloom. Uh, when the days get shorter, they'll kind of shut down on blooming, but they'll keep growing during the winter. And uh, come spring, you'll have big, beautiful plants, and then they'll they'll burst into bloom, and they'll be just amazing. Yeah, so, okay, well, yeah. you sold me already on that <laughs> one. Now, the next thing we're going to talk about, I, this is, well, I want to talk about the container before we talk about the plants in okay. the container on this one. This is like a strawberry pot on steroids here. Yeah. <laughs> right, it's, uh, it's, it's uh, kind of a new take on an old idea. Uh -huh. And uh, it's called a stackable or a stack a pot. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, the pots themselves are a, a lightweight plastic, but uh, they hold a lot of soil. And it's just a great way to get a lot of different things in one container. And, uh, you know, it's kind of cool. And you can water the top and it just filters on down yes, to the bottom. Yes, it goes, it's uh, each, each separate uh, level has drainage that drains into the bottom layer. So okay. uh, you get a great uh, watering effect. And uh, it's really 
really something new and kind of neat. Yeah, well, yeah. It, it is a very attractive thing. And for people who want to grow in very tight spaces, multiple things, this is a perfect response. And again, at the top here, we have some more calendula as kind of a centerpiece, something right. to show some color right up the top. But we have these beautiful lettuces up there too. Yeah, you know, the <coughs> lettuces uh, are so fun to grow and um, they, they thrive in the fall and winter months. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you have the red cells there and you have uh, uh, the uh, butter crunch, which is the green leafy mm -hmm. one. And then that, the other lighter green red one is uh, Patty's Choice. That's a selection from uh, Renee's Garden Seeds. Okay, so. and down below that in the, in, in the tower, we also have pansies and at the very bottom level, there are some kales, right? Yes, and those are um, kales that are ornamental but also edible. So mm -hmm. uh, there's a starboard, which is the white leaf one. That one gets super curly, uh, so it's really attractive. And then the red boar is going to give you the great red magenta color. And the thing about the kales is the colder it gets, uh, the better they taste. And the, and the prettier they are. Uh -huh. So, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Well, down in front of that, we have a, a beautiful bowl. And uh, we have uh, in this uh, some viola, which are related to pansies, of course. Mm -hmm. And the pansies and the violas are just like you know, favorite winter color, right? I mean, number one winter color yes, plant probably. Yes, absolutely, and, and uh, those are also going along with the edible theme. The flowers are edible on both mm, of those. Okay. Um, and so, uh, but they're, they can survive anything our winter wants to dish up. So. Okay, they, well, it's amazing what they survive during the cold season. Yes. But again, when the heat comes, forget about it. Right. <laughs> but the petunias in that are kind of interesting. Those are a really full double form. Yeah, and you know, the petunias are, traditionally thought of as a spring crop. Mm -hmm. They really is, it's a great fall flower. Yeah. Uh, they'll hang in there pretty well in most of our winters. And uh, it's, you know, that double petunia is a real, real eye catcher. And we have another bowl just beside that with, that it has a kale and uh, a lot of other things. What's a variety of kale? That's a striking red form. Yeah, that's the red Russian. And that's a very uh, prolific uh, variety of kale. Mm -hmm. from Russia and it's very good tasting. Mm -hmm. And that one you would, you can harvest the leaves, uh, just, you know, throw them in a salad or you can certainly cook them and steam them. Yeah. However you want to do that. Well, uh, kale is like the superfood of the moment, right? Or it, it's one of them. <laughs> it absolutely is. It's loaded with vitamins and minerals yeah. and uh, great fiber. So yeah, yeah, we all need to eat more kale. <laughs> <laughs> eat more kale. That's our, that's our motto. Okay. Now I, I was bragging on the, uh, the pansies just a moment ago, and you yes. brought a flat that has three different forms in it. I, I particularly like the the one that's called Morpheus, which yes. has that bright, bright coloration. It's just a beautiful combination of colors, that the yellow and the purple, mm -hmm. uh, but it's uh, in the Matrix series. Mm -hmm. uh, so the Morpheus, and then in the center is another Morpheus. It's in the Matrix point. series as well, yeah. I know. And then, but and, and at the end, there's a... Uh, uh, the Colossus purple. is that the Colossus name? purple? Yeah, so yeah. another great, uh, another great pansy. And and pansies, uh, the, I think that the the one trick that people need to know if they if they do pansies is just deadhead them a lot. Yes, uh, they they do. If you don't deadhead them, they'll of course the flowers will go to seed, mm -hmm. and then they'll start putting uh, energy into seed production. Right. So keep keep pinching off those heads, off with their heads. As they <laughs> <say>. <laughs> That's the motto. <laughs> That's another good motto for us today. Well, um, speaking of heads, we have heads of cabbage and other kinds of things, all sorts of greens in this in this next flat. I don't actually I don't see cabbage, but I see lots of other greens in there. Um, but uh, all sorts of herbs and things, and fall is a great time to, for planting herbs as well. In fact, a lot of people who are really experienced herb gardening say. This is the time, right? This is it, especially if you want to grow things like parsley and cilantro, mm -hmm. uh, the thymes, which are all kind of sensitive to the heat. Right. Uh, the dill, uh, fennel, these are all great fall performers. Yeah. And then you have the salad greens in there, the mustard greens, and uh, mm -hmm. so, yeah, it's, it's a great combination. Well, again, um, any sunny bed will do, and great drainage for those plants. Very good drainage, and you know, make some compost in there, and, yeah. and keep your keep your leafy vegetables and your flowers fed. They like yeah. they like to be fed pretty regularly. True, true. Yeah. No, just a brief amount of time left, but we want to make sure that we talk about the snapdragons. You brought some beautiful uh, 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 containers planted up. 
Uh, tell me about uh, a little bit more about uh, getting the Snapdragons to really perform. Yeah, well, that in that container is the uh, taller series, the Liberty series, which is going to be 18 to 24 inches tall. So that'll give you some height. Uh, there's also a Rocket series, which gets three feet tall, mm -hmm. uh, and then the uh, Carpet series, which is the Dwarfs. But uh, you know, the, the key to those is I think just getting them started in the fall. Okay. And uh, they'll they'll perform and do great, and then you'll have beautiful color in the spring. All right. Well, so. Marcus. Thank you so much for coming out. Marcus Young, again, from Bloomers in Elgin on 95 North. Great yes, to sir. have you with us on Central Texas Gardener. Thanks, Tom. All right, and coming up next is our friend Daphne.